Hey, Floss Tube. <laughs> Told you I'd be back before the end of the year. Oh, how are you? New Year's Eve, 2018. How'd we get here? Time. That's how we got here. Um, yeah, coffee? Coffee. I went for a run about an hour ago, and I'm still a little bit loopy. Yes, running. I can run again. Uh, plantar fasciitis is pretty much gone. Um, and for Hanukkah, Josh got me a pair of running shoes. Actually, he got me a gift certificate to the local running store. Uh, which paid for both a pair of running shoes and a pair of compression socks. So, yeah, he, he really knows how to romance me. <laughs> You're wobbly because I put you on something. Let's see if I can put you on something less wobbly. You're still on the tripod, which is working out very nicely, I think. Um, okay. Now you're on a tripod on top of a book. Good. All right, better. So I have the, uh, crap, life update? Life update. So I'm two weeks into a four week break from school and I cannot tell you how nice and relaxing it is. I've been practicing like sleeping until I'm ready to get up and I'm, I'm an early riser by nature, but, uh, I just need, I feel like my body's catching up. Like I just need an extra hour, hour and a half than my usual. Um, but next semester I will not have to be up quite as early as I was previous semester. So good news school-wise, um, I got a B plus in anatomy and physiology and I was sad about that until I spoke to my advisor who actually gave me an a girl for getting a B plus because she said that class is really difficult and that's an excellent grade, good job. And I was like, oh, oh, okay, well, I, I feel, I, I feel kind of chuffed. <laughs> And so, yay. And then the day after my final, my, my last final exam, I uh, drove to a community college in another county due to just, to take this test that fills up very quickly and my college, the slots are full from now until I think March and I just wanted to get it done. Um, so it's called the T's exam or the T's test and it stands for something educational aptitude. It's essentially testing your knowledge of, in this case, English, both language and grammar, math, and anatomy and you need to get a certain score on that test in order to be accepted hey sorry about that i had set a timer and uh misjudged when it was going to go off i'm was roasting a couple of heads of garlic because i'm going to make hummus today because we're having a party tomorrow um anyway where was i tease exam T's test. So you need to get a certain score on that test in order to be accepted into my college's nursing program and into most nursing programs, actually. And this is just in the US. I'm pretty sure Canada and the UK, other countries have similar but different, different requirements. Um, Anyway, so the way it goes is if you get B's in 
all of the weed out classes. So anatomy and physiology one, anatomy and physiology two, and microbiology. If you get B's or better in all of those courses, you only need to score a 60% on the T's exam. If you get C's or better, well, if you get C's, um, which is the lowest grade you can get to pass for the nursing program in those classes, you need to get a 75 on the T's exam. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to take it now, try to do as best as I can, and see how stressed out I need to be about the remaining two weed out courses I have to take. I got an 80. <laughs> so I'm in, essentially. Um, now that's not me saying I only need to get a C in, a, in anatomy and physiology too and microbiology. That's me saying I do not, I can unclench a little bit. I don't have to be like uh, 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 the entire, the entire time which is great. That is such a load. Uh, like, I don't think I can describe what a load that is off my shoulders right now. Um, this semester is going to be a little less rough simply because I was taking four classes last semester <laughs> and I'm taking three um, this coming semester, one of which I'm taking online because it's an I need an art class and the only thing I could fit was this online music appreciation course and I thought, you know what? Well, we're, we're just gonna, we're just gonna go with it. Um, and I think like the final project is go to a concert and analyze and like, hey, <laughs> school says I have to go to a live show. Okay, twist my arm. So, yeah. So next semester, I'm taking the second section of anatomy and physiology, um, developmental psychology, and music appreciation. And then, and then, um, I get the summer off. That's going to be awesome. <laughs> so the plan is, um, in the fall of 2019, I will be taking microbiology and my very first bona fide nursing course. I'm stoked. We just got to get there. So that's the little Julia school update. Uh, life, life's going. Um, holidays were hard. Hanukkah was hard. Uh, I was not feeling festive at all. I don't think anyone was just talking to my sister and my mom. Um, it, we just, our hearts were not. We're not in it this year for grief doing that to you. Um, but, you know, we, it's a, it's a journey from what I have read. So doing okay. Nana got to visit last week. My dad and my, my sibling who uh, is teaching English in Japan, um, came home for winter break so I got to see them and I hadn't seen them since in almost a year because they were going to visit us before they left last March and we had a horrible snow like Pennsylvania was just hammered and hammered with snow and there was no way they could safely drive the four hours um, from my parents house to here and that was kind of a bummer but yeah, I got to see them. They're doing well. They're not sure if they're going to be spending another year. They don't have to decide until February. So they have some time. Um, but that was fun. And Nana got to see the house, which she never thought she'd be able to do. That's that's a whole other, other thing. When you're, I guess when you're someone's primary caretaker, you're kind of laser focused on that. I don't recommend, by the way, being someone's primary caretaker when you are 93 years old. Don't do that. I mean, however you want to live your life, but I'm just saying I, 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 I don't recommend being someone's primary caretaker when you're in your 90s. Just putting that out there. So that was 
that was nice and we have we have plans to get her down here more often and we'll go up there and it so good things are looking up and what else snow measurable snow in my neck of the woods yet this winter which some people don't like I'm kind of I don't like shoveling and uh, I don't have the extra cash to pay someone to do it so yeah I just as soon not have I would just as soon not have any snow at this point in my life but yeah that's uh that's going high. I hope those of you who celebrate Christmas had a nice Christmas. We did not go to the movies because there was nothing playing that looked fun. Like a Mary Poppins sequel. Okay. Not really, not really feeling it. Um, Aquaman is PG-13 and with things like that, Josh and I kind of like to pre-screen it before we show Amelia. So, so we had a little movie, movie marathon at home and then we went out for Korean food. So that's what we do. Would you like me to talk about crafts and stuff? Cause I think that's probably why you're here. First things first, I have some shout outs and it's a little bit different than the usual shout outs. I'm calling this epic finishes shout outs. I got six floss tubers here that I know of, just that I know of, who finished epic projects this year. And you should go check it out if you haven't already because they're awesome. And I've been, floss tubers who I've been watching the progress on this for in a couple of, in, a couple of cases for a couple of years and I'm I'm super proud of them I'm just I'm so psyched for people when they finish big things like that so let's go down the list real quick uh, Sonia of cat crazy creations she finished I think she said she worked on this for a year and nine months um, this dimensions dimensions or Jan Lin um, almost full coverage, not quite, um, of who's watching whom. And it's a long, narrow piece. Um, it's probably about yay long. Um, and it's, it's gorgeous. It's these two tabby cats, um, inside looking out a window at some chickadees on a bird feeder. And she, I, it's, it's beautiful and you should go look at, um, I will try to remember to link the videos where people show these off. In a few cases, I don't think, in a couple of cases, I don't think they've actually shown them via YouTube yet, just Instagram. So yeah, I'm pumped. And now Sonia is starting her very first Mirabilia Raven Queen. So, yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff over 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 in uh in Sonia's neck of the woods. Emily C, she had a few finish big finishes this year, but the one that really sticks out in my mind, it's the one that I I really took my breath away is the three things sampler. Which I don't know if she's shown on FlossTube. I know she showed it on Instagram. It's gorgeous. I think it's Moira Blackburn. It's 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 amazing. You you should you should go look. She has such good taste in patterns, especially like sampler patterns. I just I can't. It's awesome. Calico Christine. Uh, worked all year on a Margolin Bastion Seasons sampler, I think. Also beautiful, also huge. And I love it. I remember she had a, 
sort of impromptu stitch along with it. And I remember I looked at the pad, just like just the pad. It's like, eh, it's not really my style. And it's one of those, it's one of those things where you look at the pattern and you're like, meh. No, the, the picture of the of the pattern. And then you see it stitched. <laughs> and you think, whoa, that's gorgeous. It's 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 one of those. So go go check that out. I think she showed that off on her most recent update video. I think she has a plans video most recently, but that's not the one where she shows it off. Pip Stitch Philip has two epic finishes. One was the Springs, actually three if you count. This was a bonanza year for Philip. He finished his Country Mouse City Mouse early this year. Got it framed. It's beautiful. Uh, then he finished the spring sampler from Janlin, which a few people are are working on these. I think does Jesse have one started or at least plan to start? I know Ann P has one she wants to start. And there are a few others. Massive. They're gorgeous and the detailing is beautiful. Um, so he finished that and then he finished a not quite full coverage Christmas stocking for himself. Um, so now he and his husband each have a handmade Christmas stocking and they're quite lovely. Um, and he shows those off on his most recent floss tube video, which was a couple of days ago. And last night, Pam's Crafty Corner finished Record Girls. And I'm totally fangirling over this one because I can remember when Pam started that. Like, I remember. Like, I was a brand new, like, I was brand new to floss tube. So, that, that's been a fun journey, Pam, and you did an awesome job. I, ah. Uh, yeah, last night, <laughs> she finished it. And, oh, God, I'm still geeking out about it. It's great. Oh, and um, a few months ago, Lisa Bergen over at Luby's Lot finished her Prairie Schooler alphabet all on one piece of fabric. Beautiful. Beautiful. And yeah, so those are my Epic Finishes shout outs. Um, yeah. So if I didn't mention, if you had an Epic Finish, this year, and I didn't mention, it's probably because I didn't notice because I've been a space cadet most of the year, uh, floss tube wise. But uh, feel free to, to you know, steal this shout out method because I would love to see more beautiful things. That's why I do floss tube is because I like to see the beautiful things that other people make, and especially I like to see the joy that people derive from it. So. Yeah. Me, what have I been doing? Not much, although I do have a cross stitch finish. I have a knitting finish. I have some whips and some plans. They're not terribly big plans, but they're mine and I like them. Uh, I also have books. So let's do stitching first. Um, this has not been ironed. It has not, well, I, I'm not going to wash it because it's got a uh, over dyed fabric. Am I going to hold you right side up? Yes, I am. I finished the Guardians of Notre Dame cell. I did a stitch along and I stayed with it and I was, and I'm not late. I didn't get off track too badly. So there it is. This is going to be a gift for my cousin who was supposed to go to Paris in 2019 for a semester, but it's not because she changed her, her, her major ever so slightly and now doesn't qualify, which is kind of a bummer, but she's okay with it. She's a, she's a internet. She, so her major was international business, business management with a concentration on international shipping and 
her, if that had stayed her major, her college has an, uh, an international branch in Paris. And she could have done a semester abroad, but she changed her major slightly because she really wants to hyper-focus on international shipping. And apparently she can't do that abroad for a semester. I don't know. It's, it's, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm probably mangling it. Anyway, this was supposed to be for her to commemorate that. Um, I still kind of want to give it to her because that was my intention. It still needs framed, although I'm probably just going to show it to her tomorrow and then talk about how she might want to have it finished. So, try to give you some close-ups. So, one more time for the people in the nosebleed seats. This is done on a 36 count piece of sterling from Picture This Plus. The pattern, um, I have to burp, excuse me. Excuse me. Uh, Brittany from Ingleside Imaginarium designed this and she had originally suggested you do it on a 32. I wanted it a little smaller because I'm kind of enamored of little stitches. Not as enamored as Stitching Mommy is, although I do eventually, maybe in 2020, I will try a 1 over 1 28 count something. That's neither here nor there. I used all the called for threads, so um, the Gentle Arts Moonlit Path is this sort of gray lavender bit in the in the border and then it's just DMC and anchor black and um, I think it's pretty rad so. this was this was fun. Okay, so that was the big, the big, big stitching finish. Um, I do have one last new start, and I can't remember your name, viewer, who commented on my last video when I was talking about thinking how I'd really like to start. Uh, dreidel dreidel by ink circles and, and anyway you said you should just do it because you deserve it or something like that I, but I read that and I thought you know what you're right <laughs> so I did um, so the pattern suggests a 30 count linen and a classic colorworks silk I chose a 32 count white opalescent linen and I'm using a dinky dyes and I'm hoping I don't end up regretting this because I'm using a, a stitchy box exclusive from dinky dyes that was in the Hanukkah countdown box called amateur blue and I don't know how nicely it's going to show up. Um, the variegation. I really hope I don't run out of this. Maybe I will email Liz and say, is there any left? Any? Even a half a skein? I will pay you all the money. So <laughs> anyway, um, I, I started this on, I think the 24th. Yeah, because the mail got here that day. And so it's an opalescent 32 count white linen. I'm not sure of the brand. It's kind of stiff, but it's not horribly. It, it's not like that natural linen that I stitched um, that tiny prairie schooler thing on where I could stand it up. Like, it, like I could hold it and it could stand up. That's a slight exaggeration, but not by much. Do you just want to see what I did? Okay, I did this. Oh, because it's a holiday pattern. One of my favorite holiday movies is Die Hard. I have my Alan Rickman, Hans Gruber, Needle Minder. It amused me. So, yeah. It's 
turning out well. I love stitching with silk. I love it so fuzzy huggy much. I wish I had an unlimited budget, but I don't. And honestly, I, looking at, just looking at this, you can't tell it's silk. Olivia B said, maybe early, early, earlier this year or last year that, you know, she thinks, you know, stitching with silk is really all about the experience. And I think she really nailed it. Nailed it with that. It's, it's, it's just about, about the, the stitcher's enjoyment. Um, cause I can't, I can't tell by looking at it what the fiber content of the thread is. So don't, uh, um, if you like stitching with silk, do it when you can, if you have the budget for it. And if you, if you, it's, if you think it's too expensive, it's not in your budget, or if you're just kind of don't know what the, don't know what the hype is about, then, then don't, cause it will be beautiful. It will still be beautiful. Um, anyway, I now have 11 whips. Josh was teasing me a little bit about that. And um, I might have name dropped a few people I know who have more than 11 whips. And he said, well, I didn't say you had a problem. And I was like, that's a little judgy, my friend. It's a little judgy. <laughs> Yeah, so that's what's been going on stitching wise. And the, this, this stuff is all I got accomplished after, after the semester was over. I didn't, I barely touched it the last few weeks. That, well, the, the last few weeks of a semester are always just like, <laughs> So that's all the stitching stuff. Uh, let's move on to knitting. I finished a hat that I started in March because I'm a terrible sister. <laughs> this was supposed to be my sister's birthday present. Oh, this yarn is so, so dreamy. So this is a, a Wooly Wonka Fibers pattern, our lovely Ann, uh, Ann P. This is the Blackthorn hat. And I'm... I knit this with uh, Wooly Wonka Fibers Aislinn DK, which is probably one of my top five, it's high in, in my top five favorite yarns to knit with. Um, it is so springy and soft and I just love, I want to knit a sweater out of it. I've not ever knit myself a sweater. That is a goal. One day before I die, I will knit myself a sweater. And I think I might like to do it in this because, oh my goodness. Anyway, this is in the colorway Miss Ann Elliot. It's a beautiful blue green. I, the eagle eyed among you, will notice that I have knit this pattern before. I knit it last year for the holidays for my sister's girlfriend because she didn't have a hat. And my sister got jealous. <laughs> Not really jealous. She's like, wow. That's a really pretty hat. Wow, I really like how slouchy Kristen's wearing that. Wow, that's really nice. Would you like one? Maybe, she said. So now she has one. Um, yeah, so giving this to her tomorrow too. How's it look on? Well, my sister and I have similarly, similarly shaped heads. Um, you can wear it, so her girlfriend likes to wear it kind of slashy. Um, hats, knit hats and me, I, I tend to look weird in them. I promise you that Kristen looks nicer in hers. Um, but yeah, it fits real well. If you wanted to flip the brim up a little bit and... Wear it more like a watch cap. You could do that. So, oh, this is so soft. Uh, 
know, my hair. I'm, I'm just not even going to try with my hair anymore today. We're just going to... We're just going to go with it. And then I started working on um, the pair of socks I was knitting for my father-in-law. And I think I need to rip back again because there's this pesky thing called gauge. And sometimes knitters have trouble, like we get the, the width gauge this way, correct? But the vertical is kind of another story. And I think that might be a problem I'm, I'm, I'm having here because I think this is a little long for his leg. I think, yeah, I'll have to, to actually measure and see, but I don't want to run out of yarn uh, because dye lots. So this, um, it's a fun pattern. It's easy to memorize. This is a Stephanie Pearl McPhee pattern. Um, uh, called Old Joe, and I'm knitting this with Blue Moon Fiber Arts socks that rock lightweight in the colorway Spores, and I'm magic looping uh, because I've decided I kind for sock knitting I would like to try to do more work on circular needles especially for just personal preference. I've been having some issues with the double pointed needles. Anyway, so we'll see. The, these were his, his, his Christmas socks last year. <laughs> yeah. So these are a priority. <laughs> and that's, that's all I got as far as what I've been doing recently. Um, but I do have some 2019 plans. And I'm looking at them and I'm thinking it's kind of ambitious, but we'll see. We'll see what we can do. So for cross, cross stitch, I'm doing a modified no starts 19 with uh, Stitch and Mommy and Ann P. And if you're doing No Stars 19, let me know. And I'll put the hashtag down to follow on, in so you can follow on Instagram if you like. So I'm doing al almost No Starts 2019, almost. Because in March, for, where did I, in March for Emily C's birthday, I'm participating in her goat load, <laughs> load, Sal. Um, and I'd like to get this up from stash. It might be tricky. I have a, I'm going to do this on a 40 count because I have a piece and poke through, poke through my stash, see what looks nice. I can always email Trisha and ask for the thread pack if I panic. Keep that in my back pocket. Yeah, if you want to participate, there is a Facebook group, and uh, Trisha of Three Owl Threads was selling floss packs. I don't know if she still is. Don't want to put her on the spot, but you can check. And then um, I want to do a sal. Well, this sal is kind of sort of already going on, but I want to to kickstart it. Start it with. Um, with coffee stitcher and I'm thinking maybe for my birthday the starry night sampler who's working on this Diana of it is kismet stitches is doing this Emily C is doing this Olivia B is doing this who else they're the ones who enabled me um there's got to be someone else I'm just blanking on it um, so one, two, three stitch does not carry this pattern, um, but it is not out of print, and it's uh, I think it's like four fifty. It's a pretty reasonably priced pattern. Like I just googled it. I will. Here, I'm gonna write this down. 
going to write down link shop that sells Starry Night Sampler. There. It's in the notes. So it's, it's settled law now. Um, so Garrett, if you're watching, um, I'm thinking maybe June for my birthday. What do you think? I'd like to get this up from Stash too. Um, so the model here is stitched on a 25 count. That's a little big. Unless it's one over one, but I don't think you, there's specialty stitches, so I don't. Not complicated specialty stitches, but like satin stitch and four sided stitch and queen stitch. So there's an um, for the design area, which is 156 high by 194 wide, 11 count, 14 count, 18 count, and 22 count. I might be that lady who stitches this on the 36 count again. You know, and I think I have, actually, I think I have a 36 count from XQ Design in my stash. We're going to see. Um, if I do this on a 32 count, I could probably squeeze it on some 32 count and stash it. Anyway, <laughs> this is, this is six months away. I don't have to think about it yet. But if you are interested in starting this this year, this coming year, please feel free. It would be fun. So those are the only new starts I have coming down the pike. Um, I'm going to really try to just work on my whips this year. And I'm going to prioritize finishing Nantucket Girl Sampler, the red and the black one, and QS Ladybug. So those are, um, those are going to be focuses and I'm planning to commit one week per month to the gamer. Um, and yeah, cause that needs, that needs some love. Hi kiddo. She didn't hear me. Otherwise I finally got the tiny decisions app. So that will help whenever I just can't, you know, can't figure out what I want to work on, especially after I hopefully finish those three. Um, knitting wise, I want to finish these socks. I would like to make a pair of socks for me just because I haven't in a while. And I have this yarn. This is uh, socks that rock lightweight from Blue Moon Fiber Arts in the colorway Fungus Among Us. That orange, man. With the gray, the gray and the purple. Yeah, this is, this is a Julia colorway. So I might, you know, I might just do a plain vanilla. Because I haven't knit just a plain vanilla sock in a long time. So that might be for me and that's good travel 15 minute break from studying knitting so and I want to tackle at least one of the Willy Wonka fiber Celtic year shawls I am currently I'm doing a gauge swatch for the very first one for Samhain the uh, Calaveras shawl which I don't have a photo of I'm sorry but it's in this spiced apple colorway. It's gorgeous. This is what? This is... What yarn is this? Crap, what yarn is this? The design is by Lori Law of Ocean Wind Knits. It's 
It's not a slim. This is the um, I will link it below or I will tell you below. This is this is merino and silk, I think. I forget what the name of the yarn is, the yarn base. Um, but I'm knitting a gauge swatch. Ravelry said that the gauge swatch you should knit in garter stitch. So I'm doing that and hopefully, hopefully that will work. And it's a beaded shawl and I cannot find my tiny beading crochet hooks and that's making me angry. Maybe today I will do one last sweep of my office. So those are the knitting plans. For spinning, I have decided I'm gonna do, there's um, someone on Instagram is doing this spin 15 a day challenge and I thought I can do that. 15, I can sit at the spinning wheel for 15 minutes a day. That's, yeah. Instead of pacing and having an anxiety attack, I can spin and have an anxiety attack and be productive. I mean, that's right. And as far as what I spin, I think I'm going to follow the prompts on the 2019 Wooly Wonka Fibers Craft Along. And I will link that Ravelry group thread below because you can join along too. Um, it's very loose. It, if you knit, if you spin, if you crochet, if you weave, I think weaving's allowed. I don't see why. It's very, it, you should do it. It's fun and uh, it's a good way to work through your stash. And there are just sort of quarterly and monthly prompts to kind of help you pick something. And the first, yeah, this, this prompt is quarterly. Um, it's literature themed. So you could knit a pattern that's, or knit or crochet a pattern that was inspired by a book or by an author. Or in my case, you could spin some fiber um, that was dyed um, with a particular book or author or character in mind. And um, the first braid that I'm gonna try to work through is from the Willy Wonka Fibers Fiber Club that I participated in late 2017, early 2018. And uh, uh, this is special because I actually requested a Dune themed colorway. <laughs> and so this is Melange. See the spice? We control the spice, we control the universe. Uh, just, if, 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 you, if you don't know Dune, just, 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 just pat me on the head and say, yeah, okay. So this is 100% Shetland wool, which also makes me happy because Shetland is my first wool love. Oh, and it smells like Shetland too, still. Mm. So yeah, 15 minutes a day not counting Tour de Fleece. And I'll be able to do Tour de Fleece this summer because I won't have, you know, I won't have any any uh, accelerated science classes breathing down my neck. So won't that be great? And those are my plans. <laughs> Another plan I have is I want to try to commit to filming a floss tube video a month because I miss it and I miss interacting with all of you. So try to hold me to that. I don't know how you would, but yeah. Um, so that's kind of all I got for you. Just looking through books. I haven't talked about books. Do you wanna hear about books? This is gonna be a long one, guys, I'm sorry. Books, so in the late summer, I started this book uh, by Terry Pratchett called uh, Monstrous Regiment. And I finished it after the semester was over and I loved it. Terry Pratchett, um, so it's satire, 
It's smart satire. It's poignant satire. Um, and it gave me a couple of much needed belly laughs. Just like when you just, it, um, so this, it takes place in the Discworld universe, but with a lot of Pratchett, you don't have to go into it having an encyclopedic knowledge of the world. Um, which is nice. So this is about a young woman named Polly who is, lives in this uh, country called Borogravia, made up, um, that is perpetually at war. And her brother, who um, joins up and... Uh, Joins, joins the military and off he goes. Um, the problem with that is it's pretty clear early on in the book that her brother has a pretty significant intellectual disability. And Polly decides she's going to go after him and bring him home because he shouldn't, he, he shouldn't be where he is. So she cuts her hair, dresses like a boy, and sets off to join this man's army. And uh, you, you, you quickly find out that she's not the only young woman in her country who had that same idea for a variety of personal reasons. So essentially it's, it's gender politics and geopolitics. And it's a hell of a lot of fun. Um, and it's Pratchett, so you've got a troll, and you've got a vampire, and you've got an Igor, which, you know, like, Igor, you know, the trope, the horror trope, like, yes, master, yeah, and uh, a religious fanatic, and lesbians, it's just, it's good fun, it's great fun, and see, it's... 389 pages goes by quick so yeah I, I recommend it funny 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 I'm not very good at hyping books but if you like satire if you like Terry Pratchett and you haven't read this one yet definitely if you are unfamiliar with Terry Pratchett I think this is a decent one to start with um, it'll definitely give you a, I mean, there, it, it mentions, and there's one character who's a, a recurring one in the Discworld series, but you get a very good sense of him without having to be familiar with him already in the book. So yeah, I, if this is your first go around with, with Pratchett, I, I, I don't think you'll be at all confused as far as what's going on. So, good stuff. This was fun. I needed it. And then my sister-in-law picked this up for me at a yard sale because she thought she had bought it and said, you need to read this. And I said, okay. She, she had read it, said, you need to read this. I couldn't put it down. And I said, okay, I'll look that up. And then the next time I saw her, she handed me a copy, said, like the day after I was telling you about this book, I found this at a yard sale for 99 cents. So here. And I was like, okay. <laughs> um, I zipped through this in less than a week. This is The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks. It is nonfiction. It is about cell biology. And I don't think you need to be familiar with cell biology to enjoy this book. Having taken an anatomy and physiology class, having taken biology and being familiar with histology, um, I found certain parts of it just more technically interesting and was prompted to look up slides to actually have a visual. You don't need to, to do that or have that background to appreciate the message that this book is trying to send and, and, and appreciate the, 
the story that it's telling. Um, so I'm just going to put that out there. You don't need to be good at science to appreciate this book. I want to be very clear about that. So for those of you who don't know, Henrietta Lacks was a black woman in Virginia who had cervical cancer, um, terminal cervical cancer. And her, a biopsy of her tumor was taken without her knowledge or, um, or permission. And when the cells continued to grow, they were given away and sold without her knowledge or permission and without her family's knowledge or permission. And these cells are still in labs, still growing to this day. They were used in the polio vaccine. They've been to space. They're used in cancer research. Henrietta Lacks' ancestors cannot afford medical care. They've seen nothing. They've seen, they've had no, and yeah, ran out of storage space on the phone. Huh. Anyway, um, so people made money off of this woman's cells and her family didn't even know that her cells had been harvested, let alone sold. So this is um, part biography, um, part, you know, there's a little bit of science, not, nothing's going to break your brain. Um, and part the journey of a family learning about their mother, grandmother, great grandmother. I couldn't put it down. Um, my heart broke for not only Henrietta, but for her kids, um, cause they did not have an easy life. Um, her children didn't have much by way of education, which hampered their ability to really understand what they were being told about her mother's cells initially. Um, and it just, it, it, not fair. Not fair. Um, so this is Henrietta's recognition. And yeah, read it. Good stuff. Tough emotionally, but uh, worth it. What am I reading now? I am reading, sort of. <laughs> I found um, a little local independent bookshop next neighborhood over. I walked in and poked around a bit and then I thought, I can't just walk in and leave. And I was looking around and I uh, found this little volume of uh, short fiction, which I have just started. So it's called Out of the Blue and it's a uh, short fiction from Iceland. And uh, so it's 20 stories, and uh, it's interesting. In the introduction, um, there's a translated essay um, by a writer, an Icelandic writer, talking about um, uh, Icelandic storytelling. and verse and, and poetry and how that history uh, shaped and shapes uh, Icelandic writers. And so the stories are a little bit different than, um, different in theme and in tone to, to what I'm used to and probably what many of us are used to. Um, and they're very slice of life which I like. So I will, I, I'm only like two stories in and there's a Josh. Photobombed by a beard. Hi. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I, 
I, I live like this. This is how we live. You love it and you know it. Uh, I model things for you. Yeah, you do. It wouldn't be one of my videos if he didn't make an appearance, would it? So I will let you know. Uh, but this is sort of a nice palette cleanser because short, short fiction. Short fiction is great for that. Um, yeah. So that's, that's what I got. That's what I know. I will try to get this up today with links to things. Um, we'll see. No, I'm going to, I'm going to do that. I don't have a whole lot of dinner prep to do today. So I will get right on that. So I hope that um, 2019 treats you all well. Uh, it's been a rough year for many of us and I hope we all get a little bit of a breather. And I look forward to seeing what you guys have coming down the pike in your new year. And I hope you have a safe New Year's Eve and a fun New Year's Eve. And until next time, I'll catch you around the internet, folks. Take care of yourselves.